Let's revise experimental skills in materials physics. Now, how do we prove Hooke's law? We have a spring over here that's been clamped with a G clamp for safety and with a little stand and a ruler just behind it. First of all, we're going to be varying the mass that's been attached to the spring and we're going to be measuring the extension. Typically, we find the extension just by taking away the final length from the initial length. As always, we're going to repeat multiple readings and take an average to ensure an accurate result. Afterwards, we're going to plot a graph of the force against the extension. Well, how are we going to find the force? Remember, we'd also need to mention that the force will be equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. We'll also be measuring the mass m with a top pan balance. If Hooke's law is correct, the graph will be a straight line through the origin because force will be directly proportional to the extension. We could also repeat the same experiment for a rubber band. If that's the case, the graph will not be a straight line through the origin and force will not be proportional to extension. Moving on to breaking stress. This one here is a lot of fun to do in the lab. So we take a wire and you bring it across a pulley We make sure it's clamped safely on one of the ends and then we attach a mass M on the other side. We're going to vary the mass incrementally until the wire breaks. We'll be able to calculate the breaking stress simply by using force over area. Remember the force is just equal to mg and the area to just pi times the diameter over 2 squared. In this case, we're going to be measuring the mass with a top pan balance and the diameter with a micrometer. As always, when we're using a micrometer, we're going to take multiple readings along the length and then we're going to average. Another experiment is Jung's modulus experiment. So Jung's modulus is defined as stress over strain, which is force over area, that's the stress, divided by the strain, which is extension over the original length, divided by a fraction, we get that the uh, Jung's modulus is equal to force over area times length divided by the extension. Now, to get the area, we're going to need to find the diameter of the wire. So as always, we're going to use a micrometer to measure the diameter, take, taking multiple readings along the length and then averaging. Have I said that multiple times? It's pretty important. We're going to measure the extension X using a ruler and a little marker that as we add in mass, this marker will move and we'll be able to directly measure the extension X. Afterwards, we could plot a graph of the force against the extension. Rearranging this equation, we find that F is equal to E, where E is Young's modulus, times A divided by L multiplied by X. And equating this to y equals mx plus c, I've just written y is equal to grad x plus c over here, we find that the gradient is equal to e times a divided by l. And rearranging that will allow us to find Young's modulus. Now, as always, an experiment is actually almost pointless unless we know the uncertainty in our experiment. And in order to master uncertainties, have a look at this video just right over here.